Hey everyone. I was going to go out for a uh, bike ride today, but it's really cold and it's supposed to snow later today. So I was figuring out something I could do here in my shop. Um, one of the things that I've been meaning to get to is to look over my trailers and make sure that my camping gear is in shape uh, for the upcoming season. Hopefully this video will help you if you're looking to put together a trailer and uh, all your camping gear for some outings this summer. So stick around, we'll go over all this stuff and I'll tell you what I know. All right, well, we can just start out by looking at this little trailer here. This is what I would classify as uh, something to run to the grocery store with, uh, round town sort of trailer. Um, it's got small wheels, so it's not gonna be great on trails. Um, it does have some strengths as far as uh, going off-road and all that, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I'll just do a quick overview. So that's uh, what I'd just call a light duty around town sort of trailer. Um, if we come over here, this is something that I built myself and I used one of those little uh, tow behind kid haulers and made this little dual wheel trailer here. So it's got some built-in features and all that that I wanted on my trailer. And as you'll see, and we'll talk about in just a minute, um, these are two different styles of pulling the trailer here. So this is uh, more of an off-road. Uh, that's specifically what I built it for. It's narrow uh, so that you can go on pretty much on any single track. This is a fairly narrow uh, span here. And then we'll jump over to this one, which is uh, more or less a big camping slash utility trailer. And this is much bigger, obviously has much bigger tires on it and all that and this is great for hauling a whole bunch of camping gear it's big enough you can actually even haul a little bit of firewood with you um, to a, a lot of campsites at least here in colorado require that you bring in your own firewood and don't gather locally because um, all the trees get stripped and people cutting the limbs off of them so uh yeah this is a much bigger trailer with bigger tires so if we go back to this, you'll see that this is the kind of pull bar here that hooks. This thing actually goes onto your rear axle of your bike or e-bike and you pull with the axle of the bike. Um, those have advantages and disadvantages. One of the big disadvantages is, in my opinion, is that when your wheels right here, you can turn at, at quite an angle to the trailer to the left. But if you try to turn the other way to the right, your rear, rear wheel will hit this pull bar and uh, it'll jam you up. So uh, they're, they track pretty well. They, they keep the center of gravity and everything low, which is nice but it does have that um, disadvantage of if you're trying to take a right hand turn your rear wheel may lock up onto this bar now if we come over to this one this is the kind of pull bar that actually comes up and hooks on your seat post so this goes around your seat post and this whole trailer follows you like this so what I really like about this is that uh, this thing rotates on the seat post and your bike can liter literally do a 90 degree to the trailer. Like if you're going to, you've gotten into a jam and you need to turn your bike around, you can, you can even go more than 90 um, and it'll turn around and follow you that way. So a uh, big advantage there in that you don't have to watch uh, right-hand corners like you do with these kind of pull bars. So your, your rear wheel can move back and forth underneath this pull bar. Um, I don't really have any disadvantages to this style, in my opinion, other than it could probably be argued that this is putting your pull 
um, center of gravity somewhat high on the bike, which uh, for this one doesn't affect leaning because I built it with this built-in block down below, which allows this to, allows you to lean your bike and the trailer stays flat. So that worked real well on the, the camping trip that I took this bike on. And I've also just pulled it around a bunch on trails around here, just testing it. And it's uh, followed me really well, which is nice. This again, we're back to the low toe bar, which hooks to your rear axle. <laughs> this doesn't have the adapter on it right here. And I've got that over here on my desk. Yeah, here's one. So these guys just come up and bolt on to your rear axle there. So you'd pull off your cap here, uh, remove this nut, put this underneath, and then put that nut back on. And then the trailer hooks onto that. So again, um, nice low center of gravity, but you again, when your rear wheel, if you're taking a, a sharp right turn, your wheel will hit this pull bar. Uh, if you're going the other way, you're good. So uh, things to think about when you're deciding what sort of pull bar you want for your trailer. Another thing that I've seen that's actually pretty slick, and it's uh, I've only seen it on homemade trailers. I'm not sure that anybody's producing uh, mass producing a trailer that uses this, but if you've got a really sturdy rear rack and a hardtail bike, meaning no rear suspension like this one, this is the Rip Current S, a real nice, powerful bike. Um, and if, if you've got a real strong rack here, I've seen people put the small trailer hitches that are for motorcycle trailers mount them off of that with a home built bracket and then your arm can come up to this and that's that's a great way to do it that kind of is the best of both worlds because then your bike can completely turn around that and it's keeping the pulling center of gravity even a little bit lower than your seat post so that i've never ridden one with that setup but i've seen people build them that way and it looks like a, a good solution. So again, though, you need a really strong rack and you need to not overload whatever sort of trailer you're pulling. This bracket here attaches to your rear axle, like I said, and you've got a spring within here and that's what's giving you your flex. So that's your pivot point. I've seen these springs get stretched out to where they, you know, start to expand and all that. If you go beyond the point, so you don't want to take them too far, either direction or up or down or anything. But uh, if you're not too hard on them, they'll last quite a while. This spring is just bolted into inside the tube here on both ends. Uh, but that's your flex point there uh, for those that don't know. These little wheels here are what I consider in town sort of wheels. Um, even though this is actually something to watch out for if you're ordering a trailer online, this wheel says it's a 16 inch and it is close to 16 inch on total diameter. Um, so they'll call that a 16 inch. And then you come over to this big guy here and they're calling this a 16 inch as well. That's a 16 inch fat tire, but the rim is actually 16 on this one, not the overall diameter. The overall diameter is actually about 21 or 22 inches. So much bigger wheel even though the specs will list them as 16 inch wheels. Now on this guy, I've got 20 inch wheels, which is the diameter of the rim. And, uh, you know, as if you look at this compared to over here, this 16 is actually much larger than this 20. So uh, question that when you're, when you're looking at buying a trailer, Make sure that you're getting one with the wheel diameter that you actually want. Uh, the numbers can be deceiving on these. You also need to consider what sort of terrain you're going to be riding on. This big fat tire is obviously ideal for off-road, 
um, rocky, muddy, even snowy conditions. This is a great wheel for that. These little ones work really well for um, hard pack, on road, and uh, hard pack single track. So these these work great for that. Um, these little thin wheels here. Again, I'm just going to classify these as pretty much for asphalt. This trailer is built by PyCycle. Sorry if I butchered the name, but uh, the distributor told me that's how it was pronounced, PyCycle. And uh, it's a really well-made trailer in that it's all steel construction and it does have this uh, water-resistant compartment here with a nice top on it that, that uh, straps down. So you can put all your gear in there. And if you're going through light rains, uh, you know, that kind of thing, it's going to keep everything dry. It is like a, a rubber lined fabric. So very water resistant there. This is a, a great setup. I've got a video specifically on this trailer. If you'd like to watch that, uh, you get a lot more information on that. Uh, this one, like I said, I built myself and I'm real happy with how it tracks and all that. I've got to make a couple of changes to it and uh, it'll be ready for this coming season. But this is the one that I use in backcountry where I know I'm going to be on narrow trails and all that. And then this is uh, just a run into the grocery store kind of trailer here. My rule of thumb on all of these trailers is I don't put more than about 60 or 70 pounds worth of gear on them. Uh, when you do that, then your bike starts getting very sluggish. Um, you just feel it back there. If the trailer were to try to turn over, it would have enough weight that it could uh, cause a problem, cause you to go down as well. So if you're going to pull one of these with your camping gear, get some fairly light camping gear and uh, use that. The bike that you pull it with is every bit as important as uh, the trailer itself. This bike here is the Cy Rusher Ranger. Um, those of you that watch my videos know that I really love this bike and it does so well on the, on the trails and single track. But it also pulls a trailer really well. And uh, my advice, you know, I'm going to get people that argue with me on this, but my advice is to use a hub drive motor on a uh, bike that pulls a trailer. And my thinking there is that this motor is direct drive for the wheel and it's not running its power through the chain and all of that thing. So anytime you add more weight to a bike, um, everything's going to work harder. And if you've got a mid drive, like we'll run over here and we'll look at this. If you've got a mid, big mid drive motor, which is what this is, all the power runs through this chain and to your rear um, cassette here, turning the wheel. So um, awful lot of um, power coming through this relatively small bike chain and you go and you add a 40 pound trailer and 60 pounds of gear, suddenly you're pulling almost twice the weight that this bike would probably pull um, because you've also got resistance from the wheels and all of that. So um, it's, it's putting a huge amount of strain as a mid drive through this, through this little bike chain. So that's not an issue if you're running one of these big 750 watt, 1000 watt rear hub motors. Um, those are awesome. And like I said, then it's just your power going through the chain and everything else is coming from the motor, which is pulling. So these motors can definitely handle this kind of weight and pull. It's not an issue at all. You'll go through a little bit more battery than uh, you would if, if you were just riding light by yourself. Um, so don't expect to get quite as far with the trailer as you would um, with a empty bike. Um, but they do pretty well. 
you obviously wouldn't go out and hook a trailer to a Ken Evo specialized ten thousand dollar bike. Um, they they've got small mid drives, and it just wouldn't be good for anything. Um, yeah, you'd have minimal success with that setup. Um, I call these kind of bikes with the big hub motors and all that sort of the mules of the e-bike world. Um, while that Specialized may be a, a thoroughbred, these are like the pack mules. And they do really well with big loads when you've got a big hub drive. So don't worry about that. It'll pull it. Now, I mentioned that you're going to use a whole lot of power pulling a heavy load like this. You're going to go through your battery much quicker than you would normally. And uh, my solution for that when camping is going to be this Crayfuel uh, battery power station here. So this is a thousand watts of power. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And you've got all sorts of USB charging. You can plug in your charger for your e-bike. Um, you can charge from a car. Um, you can charge from solar panels. And it's a, it's a really cool setup. And it actually doesn't cost as much as one of these big 52 volt batteries costs. Which is, um, it's the unfortunate part of e-bikes is that your battery is generally your most expensive part on the bike. So for less money than buying a spare backup battery to haul, I can take this with me. This is the solar panel that goes with this Cray Fuel. And I can theoretically, if I'm taking the big trailer here, if I'm riding in a very sunny area, I can strap this down on top and I can be charging my power station while I ride. And then that power station can come over and charge the e-bike. So um, potential for it would be slow in that I'd have to be waiting a lot for my power station to charge and then for my e-bike battery to charge. Um, but I could, as long as I had sunshine, I could go indefinitely with, uh, this setup. So very nice, um, nice quality, uh, solar panel here as well. I believe that's a hundred watt and I really like this, but if I do, if I wasn't going to ride with that open charging and I was just going to charge when I got to the campground, I'd just fold that up. Put it on the side and then stack other things in between and i'd be ready to go as soon as i got to camp now this power station has a light on it which is a i don't know if you can see that here but it's actually a really bright light which is nice when you get to camp um, but also i would suggest that you bring some sort of rechargeable lights like this guy is great um, super bright you can set up you can see what you're doing if you have any sort of problem after dark um, you can light up the area see what you're doing and take care of the issue so really nice a uh, small relatively small unit that puts out a huge amount of light and the batteries on this last a really long time um, i forget who makes this one but it's available on amazon you'll recognize it this next bit of equipment comes from REI and it is a four piece bundle of a sleeping pad, a ground cloth, your tent, and a sleeping bag. Everything comes in this bag and as it says on the end here, it says everything but the pack. Well, we're not necessarily taking the pack because we've got our trailer so that's fine uh, let me open this up and i'll show you what's what comes in these within that bag you get a fairly light summertime sleeping bag you've got the camp dome two footprint which is your your ground cloth for under the tent you've got your sleeping pad which is inflatable 
and then you've got the tent itself and that's in here so a real nice setup um, a lot of companies put out a package like this i think even uh if you went to walmart and oh i forget what their house brand is for their camping gear um but i think they even put together um, sort of a starter camper kit like this now if you include a propane stove um, pots and pans um, your food and all of that you can go out and and get started camping right away so that's a nice setup i like that one um, with this trailer that i built here that actually fits nicely in here this front bag is for all my food and cooking gear um, i've got a water bottle mounted here in addition to a larger one that i always take tools up here so this is a nice setup here in this one you've just got so much room that uh yeah you, you can pretty much bring just about anything you want it'll fit in here it's it's a huge trailer it's uh fairly wide as far as trailers go uh, especially compared to this this guy here which is I built just for single track. This actually tucks in here nicely. I have to get the strap up out of the way so it doesn't cause a problem. But uh, yeah, you've got a setup there that uh, mo the majority of what you're going to need right there just for being comfortable. I'd also throw in a hammock because personally I like to uh, uh, sit in a hammock at the end of the day and uh, with all my food and cooking stuff up front I'd be good to go this trailer here has tons of room you you can carry so much with this just be careful not to overdo it on the way to always keep things as light as you can like I said it's gonna impact your battery life hugely I know there are a lot of people who would rather build their own trailer than buy something off the internet so if you're interested in building something like this um, with this kind of pull or whatever. Um, I do have a full video on this, so uh, subscribe and check out my other videos and uh, you should get your answers there. I mentioned that this little trailer actually has a couple of off-road strengths to it. Um, one being that it's fully caged around, so it keeps all your gear in even when it's bouncing around quite a bit. And the other thing is that this has this outside bar here your axle is actually supported on both sides and this stops brush and other things from getting into your wheel here. And neither, neither of the other trailers have that. Um, that actually helps a bit, but everything else about this trailer just says, uh, keep it on the street, keep it on the asphalt. So I guess just summarize, um, have a bike that's a workhorse, um, a real pack mule type of bike like this versus a thoroughbred ten thousand dollars specialized those aren't going to work well um, have whatever sort of width and style of trailer that you like um, this is carries a huge amount this carries less but it travels in a narrow area and i like the way that this pivots uh, much less restriction on the trails and then if you're just running around town these little guys work fine you can pick these up for uh, $130 or so on Amazon, very inexpensive. And then if you're building your own, think about uh, one of the little trailer hitch style here, and those seem to work really well. You can look those uh, videos up on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll be able to find uh, whatever you're looking for. I also uh, personally like to have some sort of um, signaling device on the trailer just so that um, people these days are constantly looking at their phones or they're got their phones out the window trying to take pictures as they drive if you're up in the mountains and in a real pretty spot so something that attracts more attention i also wear orange myself and uh, i do have these lights on the bike that are always flashing if i'm out on the road so um i highly uh, recommend these kind of things both front and back so that should kind of get you 
started on your uh, camping gear and hopefully that helps you decide a little bit on exactly what kind of style you want. But uh, that's what I've learned so far. I'll let you know as I go further in the season. Um, looking forward to getting back out and doing some camping with the e-bikes. And it should be a, a nice spring here as soon as it stops snowing. So, hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Bye.